Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about using technology tools to collaborate and share resources among communities of practice. Now what can we expect at the end of this video? First, we should be able to identify features and uses of ICT tools for collaborations and sharing of resources among communities of practice. Second, to engage in a community of learning or COL for mathematics and science teachers and learners. Third is to design a collaborative activity using appropriate technology tools. And lastly is to implement the designed ICT-based collaborative activity. Okay, moving on, to formally introduce our topic, let's take note of the word collaboration, which is the most important skills that must be developed among students according to many literature sightings. This skill should be taught in school because it will help us as future teachers in achieving the learning outcomes of our lessons. Among any other skills, collaboration is seen as one of the most important skills in the 21st century classroom, together with critical thinking skills, problem-solving skills, and communication skills. All of these are necessary for us to succeed in today's world. Development of collaboration skills will prepare us to be inclusive and productive in the class and in the society. As we attend school, we were given tasks to collaborate with others. And we learn to value not just our ideas but also the inputs and ideas of our that are coming from our classmates or other students. So this can eventually help us in our future profession to collaborate with our co-workers and stakeholders even with the different personality skills and knowledge. So let's take for example in mathematics and sciences classes. Collaborative tasks are useful in acquiring skills for both these fields. As we develop higher order thinking skills, we also develop our self-confidence because we are collaborating with others and we can share our ideas and gain ideas from them too. Now how about if we put technology in the picture? Well, things will get even better because collaboration won't be limited only within the four walls of the classroom or within the school. It can also be done among communities and among institutions which are far apart. This has paved the way uh, to sharing of instructional expertise, curriculum, and many others between and across countries. Let's proceed to lesson 1, ICT tools for collaboration and sharing resources. There are different ICT tools that can be integrated inside the classroom for collaboration and sharing resources. To be able to put value to the integration of collaborative tasks in class, there are steps to work on the following activities. The first step is grouping students for a collaborative task. In order to have collaboration in a classroom, collaborative tasks must be done. A teacher can facilitate a collaborative activity where students will reflect on the essence of collaboration in general. They can start by grouping the students into 6 to 8 members and provide activity in which the students can share, participate, and collaborate with their group mates. The step 2 is processing on the role of collaboration as a 21st century skill. It is about processing the whole activity by asking how the students accomplished their output and they will be going to share their ideas and the importance of collaboration in real life situations. Collaboration is really important especially in classroom setting as it connects every student by sharing their thoughts and ideas with their groupmates. Integrating 21st century skill would be a better way to have a good outcome of a class discussion. The third and last step is writing a reflection paper on the relevance of collaboration. 
it is simply about concluding the session with a short reflection. Reflection paper is important because it is part of the learning process, and each member of the group will be going to bring their own experience and understanding, and they will be able to collaborate and participate with their group members. Good day everyone, and now let us move on with our next discussion. So, there are there are many collaboration tools that are useful or that are proven to be useful in the field of education nowadays. And because of this pandemic, teachers in the different parts of the world are forced to use some collaboration tools to facilitate the learning of their students or to communicate with their students. And now, I will introduce to you the online collaboration tool to facilitate a professional learning community. So these platforms were shared by Julie Moore in the year 2018 that supported the critical friends group for the CFG works. So number one, we have the text-based chat. So text-based chat has an advantage for online mathematics and science majors are for the science community because teachers and students can collaborate by, with their ideas and thoughts regarding mathematics and science subjects and they can also avoid pitfalls by creating some conventions for example um, students have questions they can just um, comment a question mark and number two we have Skype it allows free-flowing conversation and less preparation, but there are advan disadvantages in using this platform. Like, it requires high-speed internet connection, slow internet connection may drop the call or provide intermittent service. Number three, Wimba Live Classroom. So, Wimba Live Classroom is an asynchronous online tool you can share audio push powerpoint slides um push websites and share your desktop for the continuation of online collaboration tools to facilitate a professional learning community let's proceed to number four the google plus hangouts uh, google plus hangouts allows for video of all the participants the ability to share documents via links in the chat window or sharing directly through Google Docs. And also, it allows the discussion to flow clear and allow the facilitator to play less of a traffic top rule. And also, Google Plus Hangout gives participants the ability to easily share agendas and collaborate on documents via Google Docs. So next, number five is Zoom Us. Zoom Us allows for high definition, multi-point video and audio. It also has a chat feature and screen sharing capabilities, while still new CFG finds Zoom as a better platform. So number six is Kahoot. Zucker and Fish 2019 conducted a study that shows that Kahoot application can be used as a collaboration tool. Uh, Kahoot is a web-based platform that allows users to easily create and play interactive multiple choice style games. So, the students and teachers were able to play their way into substantive and student-centered discussions. Research collaboration tools. One of the significant activities that can be done together by mathematics or science teachers and students is to do research. As they do research together, the opportunity to share resources and inputs can be aided by technological tools. In a research that was conducted Staley and McCallum 2010, they will be able to share some online tools that have emerged to be useful in the conduct of collaborative activities with medical practitioners. You can visit this following website. First, we have the Silang. Just type www.silang.com. This is a free networking community that focuses on science researchers. 
Styling profiles include resume and biographical information as entered by users as well as automated updates from web-based data and literature that create network relationships such as publications and co-authors. Second, we have the Epernicus. Just type www.epernicus.com. Epernicus is a professional networking expertise locator for current and former research scientists. User accounts are free but require registration upon which one answers questions about his her research area and institution. Detailed information within Epernicus profiles creates automatic network connections formed by shared expertise, methods, or institutional relationships. Epernicus also provides private networking platforms available to individual institutions through the Epernicus Solutions service. Third, we have the Refwork COS Research Support Suite. Just type www.cus.com and www.csa.com. This subscription-based product is actually a suite of tools designed to provide support throughout the entire research process. Available from former community of science, including CUS expertise and CUS funding opportunities as well as a few additions currently available on the CSA Illumina platform. Next is Research Crossroads. You can type www.researchcrossroads.com. Now, Research Crossroads is designed to provide transparent access to publicly funded research. Profiles are based on publicly available data, but researchers may also log in to update their own information. Researchers can use the service to maintain a public profile and search for other researcher or organization profiles. Number five, save. You can type www.saibi.tv Saibi is a multimedia community that provides social networking, collaboration, and communication applications for publishers. Number 6 is Plus One. www.plusone.org Plus One is launched way back in 2006. Plus One publishes reports of original research from many disciplines and is said to provide a channel for fast publication where authors retain their own copyright. Last is number 7. Number 7 is Canopy. You can type www.canopy.org or site you like. Site you like is www.site you like.org and to pull up. Tukulab, www.tukulab.com These are the tools designed to handle reference management are produced by major publishing groups. Overall, these tools also share a few common design features. These tools include one-click browser buttons that allows to add citations. Next is tagging with keywords to assist in organizing and searching across other user libraries. Next is user profiles that includes bibliographies of published material. And last is the group functions. The group functions that allow users who have common interests to share or discover references as well as set privacy settings for collaboration. Recommendation for effectively employing online collaboration tools It is not enough that you use online collaborative tools as voluntary strategy in to be guided by some principles in selecting and employing these tools in mathematics and science teaching. According to Hershat and LaVeyk Mountain in 2012, often multiple online collaboration tools or OCTs provide ways to achieve the same goals, each with its own advantages and disadvantages. So number one, startup cost. Most of the current OCTs are the online collaboration tools are very easy to use, but it's always a good idea to test drive a tool. 
especially from a student perspective, before making its part of one's instructions. Per 2. IT Support IT staff in your academic unit, instructors should carefully consider their comfort level, willingness, and availability to serve the role of technology, support, and training, and also important to consider whether your classroom has the appropriate infrastructure to serve the desired technology. So for the continuation of recommendation for effectively employing online collaboration tools in teaching number three is tool overload. So students can be overwhelmed by the diversity of instructional technologies in several ways. So first, they may become frustrated if they have to learn how to use many different tools to complete similar tasks across courses. Second, is managing accounts and passwords for different OCTs can be challenging as well. The number of accounts and passwords within and across can rapidly become unmanageable for students. Third is leveraging your institution's learning management system can ease students' navigation of course materials and multiple online tools. Fourth is the accessibility. So here is a question. Is the technology accessible to students with disabilities? So, for example, Google Docs are accessible to students or to some users with disabilities primarily via keyboard shortcuts but are not accessible to visually or dexterity impaired users who depend on screen reader or speech input technologies. So, if instructors select technologies that are not accessible, they will consider employing an additional strategy. So, for instance, is in addition to sharing of Google Doc with students, instructors could um, upload a doc version to resources in collaboration tools which is accessible to visually impaired students. Now, let's move on to the next recommendation. Protect students and their privacy. One of the virtues of OCT or online collaborative tools is that sharing content is easy. So, instructors must think about how widely information will be shared. For example, a blog or a course-generated website or video. Students can be required to produce publicly available content if this activity is central to the learning goals of the course. So to protect the student's identity and ensure their safety, instructors must provide the option for the students to participate anonymously when content is public. Now, for a letter C, resist the myth of tech-savvy students. Technology has a great help in the learning of the student, especially in online platform and digital learning. But students vary significantly in technological proficiency. Some may have only a surface level familiarity with them. So, it is not a good idea to expect one student to be familiar with any given OCT. In this video, I am going to discuss about the recommendation for effectively employing online collaboration tools or OCTs in teaching. So let's go to the letter D. Develop guidelines for equitable and inclusive participation. There is a need to look into providing equitable and inclusive participation when employing online collaboration tools. In research, it was found out that it is helpful to develop guidelines for appropriate etiquette for the discussion. In online, students might make inappropriate or unprofessional comments. So for the guidelines, faculty may invite students to help to develop it. Building consensus and acceptable practice to student ownership. Next is for letter E, actively foster and sustain desired student engagement. Giving students to use an OCT and then keeping up with what gets produced can be challenged. For example, a purely voluntary blog is unlikely to get contributions or readers. When considering an OCT, asking yourself the following question can be helpful. First, 
is that how large is my class and how many students will use this tool? Second, is to what extent should I incentivize participation? Third, will keep up with this tool and how carefully? And fourth, whom should I credit? And next is how will I optimally sequence activities to promote engagement? Next is what are the criteria for successful performance? Last, these are the opportunities to integrate student generated OCT content in the face to face sessions. The following are additional online collaboration tools and applications for teaching and learning shared by Chad Hershak, PhD from the Center of Research and Learning and Teaching, CRLT University of Michigan 2012. The Google Apps are the blogger calendar and docs so the selected interesting features of blogger are post text images audio video respond to post private or public the sample application for teaching for the blogger is posting of course notes materials forum for the student writing and reflection analysis space for the student dialogue the second google apps is the calendar the selected interesting features of the calendar is manage multiple calendars subscribe to existing calendars smart scheduling by clarifying availability the sample applications for teaching of calendar is the schedule of GSI meetings, student learn meetings, student sign up for an R appointment, student subscribe to supplemental events. So the third one is the for the Google Apps is the Docs, which interest selected interesting is the synchronous asynchronous collaborative authoring editing commenting threaded discussion synchronous text chat while editing document sharing version control organized by collections for easy search and retrieval multiple identifying tags possible so the docs in the google apps collaborative authoring by students instructors interactive feedback on student work via comments in margins easy surveys classroom assessment scheduling of makeup exams and etc collaborative concepts mapping or image annotation collaboration collection and analysis of lab data so for continuation of additional online collaboration tools and application for teaching and learning so we have number five the moderator the selected interesting feature of moderator is to create back channel during lecture, seminar, and presentation. The audience may submit and vote on questions or ideas. For the sample application for moderator for teaching is to collect, prioritize, and response to student question during plan interval rather than calling on hands. So vote on Prioritize idea or ideas, questions submitted by student in response to instructor prompt, and use as clicker system to respond to question or answer. Number six, we have site. The selected interesting feature of site is to collaborate website creation, private or public. The sample application for teaching of site is to creation of student project website documentation of student work, creation of course or curriculum materials. Then we have box. The selected interesting of box is to store, organize, and share large file, tag and search list, comment on files, create editable tags list at level of files. The sample application for teaching of box, the student collaborate on video production project involving many iteration. Instructors provide feedback and internship on group project. Number eight, we have Piazza. The selected feature interesting of Piazza is the 
wiki style discussion forum to ask and answer question. Instructors can endorse and answer. Editor support the question for tag and search poll. Generate report of site activity. That is all for lesson 1. Now let's move forward to lesson 2. Engaging in a community of learning. So, able to apply the principles and concepts of collaboration among mathematics or science learning communities, follow the three steps as a preliminary activity for this lesson. So, here are the three steps. In step one, community. Step two, presentation. And step three is processing. In step one, ask your student to group themselves and make a word cloud for community. They can create in online or they can create using recycled band paper or manila paper and they can also use the following application for these exercises like word salad, word deal, word art, word the balls, word gram, and word it out. In step 2, let your student to present their works to another group. And the last step was processing. Process the activity by asking the common words generated for the word given. So let your student work in pairs and browse the net and find online communities for mathematics or science teachers. Using a checklist, find out relevant communities and let them share at least two that they have reviewed and justify why they recommend such site and to be able to benefit from existing and free calls we need to do the following activities step by step number one literature review number two sharing and number three is exploring free calls for number one literature review which a group of two to three members search for at least three to five peer-reviewed research articles that talk about the effectiveness of being a member of goals Number two, sharing. Take note the findings of the literature read and present this through presentation software. Highlight the key points from the presentation and synthesize by asking them how calls can help in the professional development of mathematics or science teachers. The last step, number three, exploring free calls. Look for the free calls in mathematics or science teaching and learning where you can sign up. After signing up, participate in discussion or any activities in the call and share the result of your experience to the whole class. After which, consider going back again to your learning plan and analyze how you may maximize or use these calls that you explore. And now let's continue to discuss the following descriptions, the end concept of calls taken from various sources. Let's move to number three. Number three is defined as a group of people who share values and beliefs and who are actively engaged in learning from one another. Number four. There are a group of people who share a joint enterprise that is understood and continually negotiated by its members and also have mutual engagement that binds members together into a social entity and have created a shared repertoire or communal responses or ways of thinking, being, and doing that members have developed over time. Number five, group of teachers who are actively engaged in a collectively constructing meaning. And for number six, a group of members or a learners on the age of new learning and under continuous reflection. The new community learning comes in various shapes and size fits all mentality. Number seven, this term is an overarching understanding of the group of the students and also including the instructional facilitator who came together with the intention to learn information while also supporting the larger group's instructional understanding and efforts. So this term reflects a philosophical understanding that learning is not a singular but instead it is a socially supported effort.
Oh, 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 oh,